Okay. Let's go ahead and get started with the agenda, which is very short, for this special meeting of the West Haymarket Joint Public Agency. Uh, my name is Chris Beitler, and I'm here today with Carl Eskridge and Tim Clare, and together we are the board of the Joint Public Agency. Uh, notice of the public meetings law, I hope is posted near the door. Is it, Brandon? All right, we're good with the public meetings law being posted. Uh, the discussion today is, is open to comment by the public. Uh, we have a time limitation that we uh, apply of five minutes to speak on specific items listed on the agenda. And the only thing we ask is that people identify themselves for the official record. Um, so with that, gentlemen, I don't know if you have any preliminary comments or anything. Let's go ahead and get started with our agenda, which, other than the motion to adjourn, consists of one resolution, WH17-26, which is a resolution <clears throat> requesting assistance from the Nebraska Congressional Delegation in <clears throat> maintaining a program referred to as the Build America Bonds, uh, and also another set of uh, bond programs that relate uh, to the JPA and the financing of the West Hay Market JPA. Uh, and to that end, uh, we would like to ask a couple of people to come forward uh, and to introduce us to the problem at hand and how it relates to the resolution that, that we have on our agenda. Uh, and I think we'll start, the plan is to start with Mike Rogers, I believe, and our bond council on many different types of bond issues and have him describe what the uh, current problem is, uh, which has just been identified to us in the last week uh, and relates to our keeping up with federal legislation that is currently under consideration in Washington. So uh, with that, Mike, why don't you uh, begin to explain to us how this all evolved. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, board members, again, uh, my name is Mike Rogers, uh, Bond Counsel with Gilmore and Bell. Uh, in 2010, the Joint Public Agency issued uh, bonds uh, to finance the ARENA project and utilized provisions under the, uh, the Recovery Act, uh, which was in place at the time. In 2009 and 2010, it was possible to issue uh, a couple of different types of bonds, Build America bonds and Recovery Zone Economic Development bonds, both of which were used by the Joint Public Agency along with a, a, a large number of other political subdivisions. Uh, the, that pro, those programs uh, entitled the Joint Public Agency to a subsidy equal to a percentage of each interest payment. So since 2010, every interest payment that the Joint Public Agency has made on those bonds, it has received a subsidy payment from the federal government equal to a percentage of those interest payments. Uh, at the time, uh, those subsidies were made uh, participating in that program very favorable and uh, resulted in a much lower borrowing cost for the Joint, joint Public Agency uh, than utilizing other uh, financing techniques. Uh, today, uh, the tax reform efforts in, in Congress being considered in the House and Senate, uh, which we've been following, have uh, been uh, of interest to, uh, to us related to tax-exempt bonds. And last week, uh, it was uh, an unintended consequence was, uh, was discovered related to those efforts. Uh, it turns out that if tax reform passes, uh, in its current form, with no further action, the Federal Pay-As-You-Go Act would trigger automatic, across-the-board 
uh, sequestration of federal payments to a broad range of programs and included in those programs would be the subsidy payments to the joint public agency. Those payments would be reduced uh, to zero. Uh, those, um, the, the result can be avoided in Congress and the fix has been identified as uh, Congress taking up a separate measure to exempt the tax reform efforts from the Pay As You Go Act. Uh, those efforts uh, under Senate procedural rules would require 60 votes uh, to exempt, uh, uh, exempt tax reform from Pay As You Go and uh, avoid this uh, unintended consequence. Um, uh, there have been, uh, there's been an, uh, quite a bit of press in the uh, finance industry about this issue over the past week. Um, and uh, there have been quotes from uh, senators, including the Finance Committee Chair Orrin Hatch in Utah, who had uh, told committee members last week there, there has never been a single sequester uh, ordered under the PAYGO Act, uh, and there have been a, a large number of legislative bills that have been exempted from the PAYGO Act, and he expected that this would be treated the same. So the, 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 the uh, correction of this has been identified, uh, but it's yet to be determined whether tax reform will go through as, as proposed in Washington and whether the, the fix would also go through as identified by, by the Senate. The tax, the tax Reform Act um, said that they wanted to take out, they wanted to reduce the debt a million or a trillion five right. over 10 years. And these payments under PAYGO were not part of that Tax Reform Act. That's correct. The, the reason the PAYGO Act would come into, effect, into play is because the, the, the deficit would increase by $1.5 trillion over 10 years. And so that's trigger, triggering the uh, Office of Management and Budget to automatically re reduce uh, or cut certain programs. That those reductions, these automatic sequestrations are not part of that. Uh, calculation. The Congress has not taken these automatic reductions into their calculus to uh, hit that $1.5 trillion dollar target. So that's, that's correct. This was never the plan by Congress to rely on these automatic across the board cuts. This is and not this, that's why the, the, the resolution we're talking about here discusses the unintended consequences of the Tax Reform Act. That's correct, yes. Other questions? Do we have others that are going to speak? I'm, I'm wondering about. Some we do. Of Brandon's okay. going to speak, okay. and you can have anybody else who's willing. Okay. Uh, I might ask you one question, Mike, just for clarification. <laughs> you immediately went to the solution of separate legislation, disconnecting this bill from the previous enacted sequestration requirements of PAYGO, right? Right, yes. And <clears throat> technically, a bill sits in the Senate at this moment in time and technically could be amended to disconnect whatever's in that bill from the PAYGO Act. <clears throat> you didn't suggest that alternative, which means, A, I could be wrong about that, or two, uh, all indication is as a political matter, they're not going to touch this bill for any purpose or see something else? Uh, well, well I, would, I will confess I'm not a, uh, a federal legislative expert. I'm a bond lawyer. I, I read mostly state law and tax law and some securities law and try to understand how to um, represent clients like the joint public agency with respect to transactions going forward. Following federal legislation is not my strong suit and this is, uh, I'm sort of a, a, a novice at it here and I'm simply relaying uh, a lot of what I've been reading in the industry press about uh, the, the problem that's been identified and the, and the solution. I'm not, I suppose, I, I, I'm not sure legislatively or uh, how, with how the bill is advancing through Congress, 
uh, what sorts of measures could be done, but I, um, but my my general understanding is that that uh, the tax reform bill in the Senate is expected to go through with a simple majority, but exempting it from the PAYGO Act would require 60 votes. But does it require 60 votes if it's done in conjunction with the current legislation as opposed to? A simple majority, yes. The, uh, the exempting it from the PAYGO Act would require 60 votes, and is my understanding under a procedural. Whether, whether the current bill was amended or PAYGO itself was amended. Yes, and I think that, again, this is my understanding from reading the articles rather than studying the procedural rules in the Senate, but I, my understanding is it's the, they're under the Byrd rule, um, Senator Byrd, not, uh, not, a, not an animal, Senator, the Byrd rule requires 60 votes to, uh, to exempt it from the PAYGO Act. Um, and and uh, so I suppose if, if the legislation were uh, planned to get through the Senate with 60 votes, then they could take this measure up at the same time or make it part of that. But my understanding is the the expectation is that the Senate bill would would go through with less than 60 votes with just a simple majority. But again, that's just what I've been reading in the in the press. Okay. That's Carl. Um, so just to just to clarify, or my understanding here. The impact of, of what was done with these bonds, it effectively reduces the interest rate that we pay, is that? Yes, okay. that's correct. Yeah, by, by receiving so raises, the sub Raises the interest rate. The net effect is an increase in the interest rate. If, if, the, if, these were, if the sequester would go through, it would have an effect of right. okay. raising the interest rate. But the program itself, from the start, uh, functioned to reduce the overall borrowing cost by, by giving the JP, J, doing public agency access to this subsidy for every interest payment. Yeah. So I don't. No, no. Finish. So, so is um, you know worst case scenario if this uh, does go through and and are, are we able to to refinance or do anything differently with with these loans or, or not? Uh, the bonds were issued uh, with uh, a provision that allows them to be refinanced. Um, the, the refinancing provisions uh, require a calculation uh, to make current bondholders whole. It's called a make whole call, which is a common uh, provision in taxable bonds. These, these bonds were issued with taxable interest at the start, and the subsidy payments reduced the borrowing costs down below uh, tax exempt rates at the time the bonds were issued. The, uh, uh, the make whole call provision requires that um, not just the principal be paid to the current bondholders, but the principal plus an amount to make them whole for what they would have lost by holding on to the bonds and, and keeping in the bonds as, a, as an investment. My understanding uh, uh, is that, uh, and I didn't, didn't do the calculations, but my understanding is that currently uh, the make whole call provisions would make it uneconomical to do a refunding even if the subsidy is lost. I'm not sure if you mentioned the scale of the subsidies for the two programs. Could you mention that for us? Yeah, I think, and I don't know if Brandon wants to come up with uh, Oh, Brandon's going to cover that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else for Mike? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. it. Brandon Kaufman, our finance director. Good morning. Um, so as far as the scale of the subsidies, in 2018, the West Hay Market JPA is scheduled to receive $3.6 million from the federal government. Um, those subsidies run through 2046, and in total are about $69.9 million through the end of the, of the bonds. Um, so when you look at the total bonds that were issued, we've got somewhere around 325 million that's currently outstanding, and 200 million of those were issued for the Build America bonds. The, the description a set of description. Let me clarify a set of descriptions, so we're, okay. we know we're talking about the same thing. 
uh, there are the Build America bonds direct payment, right? And then there are the recovery zone economic development bonds, two sets of bonds, right? Yes. Okay. And and as and how much of the principal financing is in each of those categories? I think as far as uh, principal financing. When was the recovery? Thirty-three million. Thirty-seven. Thirty-three. I'm sorry. Thirty-three. Okay. And then the re remaining would be um, the Build America. So those schedule those payments. We haven't paid any principal yet, so we still have over two hundred two hundred million outstanding. Those are the bonds that are scheduled. I think in 2020-21 for principal payments to start being paid on. Okay. So. The Build America bonds, did you say, are the bulk of the bonds? That's correct. Bonds? Okay. And what is the subsidy rate that applies to that sector? I think both of them have a 35% They're subsidy rate. They're both 35? Rate. Yeah. Oh, 45. Okay. Okay. Which is 45? I'm sorry. The recovery zone economic development bonds have a subsidy rate of 45% of each. Okay. So the smaller assemblage is there was is a limitation 45. on how much uh, how many recovery zone bonds could be issued which is why they're the smaller ones there was a, a limited amount of those to be to be issued nationally the build america bonds were unlimited so uh, but the but the build america bonds have a 35 percent uh, subsidy rate the recovery zone bonds have a 45 percent subsidy rate okay now that you're back up here let me ask one other question that would seem to be in your more in your domain uh, the 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 3.6 million that is coming due this year is that in one which of the categories is that in that's a com combination of both combination of the and two I don't know what the breakdown is between the recovery zone subsidy All right. and the this this proposed corrective legislation insofar as it seems to be aimed towards separate legislation subsequent to the passage of the main bill when does this have to be done by in order to assure us that we're not going to lose that first 3.6 or whatever that is uh, that's the closest pending loss uh, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure of the timing when it when it must be passed in order for that for the subsidy to be saved for the next calendar year. Okay, I think it all depends on the outcome of the legislation more than likely. Um, I know right now we're scheduled, I think today, to receive 1.8 million from the federal government for the half of this year's current payment, and then I believe we're supposed to receive 1.8 million or no, the second half in May before the bond the payments in June okay if the if the recover or with if the or what name did they give us <laughs> Just concoction tax, tax reform act I don't, tax I, I reform don't know. let's call it the tax reform act the big congressional bill uh, if that's passed on its current schedule which I understand to be before the end of the well before the end of the year because the Senate has to handle it it has to go to a joint committee I think and then they resolve things and then they may have to go back to one or the other of the houses to get approval or maybe they have to do that anyway I'm not I'm not sure about federal processes either Mike uh, but uh, How is, how is that going to work? I mean. So I think if, let's say if. So, so we, we got well, half of the 3.6 at risk. For, is what you're saying, because we've been paid half of it, is, for, or yes. will be paid half of it. Is that what you said? Yes, for our, for the JPA's fiscal year, I think for, we would have half at risk for 2017-18 and then full at risk moving forward. But that depends on the outcome of the legislation. 
Okay. All right. I think that uh, I think this discussion um, underscores why we're here, and that we don't know what's going to happen. It's all speculation as to what the final tax bill is going to be, whether there's going to be sequestration, whether there's going to be a bill introduced to eliminate uh, or exempt sequestration, whether you know what what all these things are. I think I walk away from this saying I appreciate the information that you've given. You've said, hey, this, you know, you you uh, you, you raised the issue that this could have an impact, and uh, um, we don't know the extent of the impact. We don't know the extent of of what, if anything, is going to be there. But I think your job as bond counsel, you've done exactly what you're supposed to do, and that is raise it to our awareness. And discuss that this is out there, and you're watching it. And what can we do? And and I think, I think it's, uh, you know, we're we're taking a neutral position as far as the tax act itself, but we're saying we should exempt out the sequestration because it affects this program and it affects lots of other programs, ag programs that can have negative detrimental effect on our state and the state's economy. And and these are things that that uh, we're not the only party that is watching this bill. There's, there's parties that are, uh, you know, there's ag programs, there's uh, public schools, there's lots of different entities that are receiving payments pursuant to uh, these, these, these bonds that were issued um, years ago. So um, I suppose the the uh, moral of the story is we need to stay tuned and keep a watchful eye and make sure that our congressional delegation is educated into the impact that it would have on our state's economy. Any other comment? Brendan, did I interrupt before you got actually finished? No, I think we're good. Okay. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, and, you know, I should have invited public comment, I think, after the first speaker. Uh, it was all in the same resolution, so you're fine, I think. Okay. So uh, I don't think we have any more formal presentation. So with that, why don't we invite public comment? Um, Jane Kinsey with Watchdogs of Lincoln Government. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to say that uh, the first paragraph says uh, a financial strain on the taxpaying constituents. It's ironic that after all of this, that the taxpayers' uh, financial strain is even considered. Um, Mr. X, S. Rich and um, Mayor Beitler uh, do not seem to be concerned about the taxpayers. Um, the issue of um, before the city council is issues um, seldom go with any kind of consideration for taxpayers. Uh, $600,000, the JPA. Uh, is giving uh, to the arena and in the future they will continue to give money to pay off uh, an arena pay off bonds that arena is not solvent and it, there's not much hope for it to be solvent in the future the um, in the first place you shouldn't have depended on um, the U.S. government to bail you out. They have a terrific debt in the red. And this, this kind of thing for local benefit and not necessarily even benefit, this is something that the Vision 2015 wants and they are making billions off of it. So um, it's just unconscionable that you have done this in the first place. The recovery is strong.
there's no need for you to have it. Um, but of course, what would happen is you would tax the taxpayers. So um, in the end, the taxpayer is the loser on this. It's this kind of local demand for money to build projects that may not be necessary, which this is one of them, in the opinion of taxpayer, many taxpayers, uh, that has a financial debt in the red. Uh, we just cannot believe that uh, this was not poor planning in the first place. You um, always have the pro problem of your projections never coming through. And fiscal conservatism um, by this administration would have uh, foreseen that this could possibly happen. Now you can say, well, we didn't know. We depend on the government, uh, U.S. government, to uh, keep their promises. Um, if they do, then the taxpayer is the loser in the end. It's, um, well, we hope that this will uh, pass. It may put you in trouble. It may put some other pro projects in trouble. But we can't continue to spend money that we don't have to have projects that are not necessarily um, important but are a bonus. Our streets are in terrible condition. Our infrastructure in this state is in terrible condition. It's, we just have to uh, come back. So we will be emailing um, our delegation as, to, as a total and as in separate individuals to disregard this resolution and to carry forth to uh, try to keep our U.S. government uh, from supporting frivolous types of um, entities. And not only that, but people voted for the arena. They did not vote for all of these other things that are going on. And um, we just find it uh, horrendous that uh, the way things are going in this city. Uh, as far as what is necessary and what is not necessary. So, that's up. Thank you, Jane. Is there any further public comment? Seeing none, is there a motion? So moved. On WH1726, a motion to approve. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further comment? Call the roll. Esbridge? Yes. Claire? Yes. Whitworth? Yes. All right. Uh, is there the resolution passes? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. The moved and seconded to adjourn. Call the roll. Esbridge? Yes. Claire? Yes. Yes, we are adjourned. <laughs>